Okay, before we read today's passage, I wanted to kind of talk to you about New Year's that's coming up. How many days are there in a year? 365. And most days are like any other day. A day is a day. But there are some days with some sentimental values. Like, like your birthday. Like anniversaries. Like Christmas and this time, New Year's Day. New Year's a day of special sentimental value because it's a time of the year that we look back. It's the one year that you've lived. How many of you had really good 2019? One, good. Nobody else? Okay, thank you. Two. How many of you had really bad 2019? So, so? Okay. When you look at this year, I'm sure there's moments that you're proud of. There's moments that you regret and wish that you could have done something different. There are people that you are grateful to. And there's people that you are sorry to. There's painful memories that help us to mature. And there's ugly sins that convicted us to repentance year is full of these events. As we look back to 2019, I want you to kind of fill in your heart. What do you think about this one year that you lived? Did you live it with God? Did you live it with love in your heart? Did you live it with joy? Yours is also sentimental because we look forward, right? Okay, let bygones be bygones. This is what happened in 2019, but I have a new year coming. I'm excited. For this new year, I'm going to live differently. I have a clean state, slate. I have a chance to redeem myself. It's a chance for me to look in to the brand new year and make resolution for ourselves. How many of you in here make resolutions for yourself for 2020? Some? Okay. Things we want to promise ourselves. Promise to break bad habits. Promise to start good habits. Promise to overcome sin. Promise to live the life of righteousness. So as we approach New Year's, I want to think about your New Year's resolution. How do you want to better yourself in 2020? What kind of things do you want to commit yourself to? 2020, December 27th, when this time comes around next year, how do you see yourself changed? Where do you want to be? Would you guys be more mature, taller, prettier, handsomer, fatter? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself closer to God, further away from God? Today I want to talk about not only the new year, but the resolution to be new. New Year's resolution versus resolution to be new. Not the things that you're going to try to do new, but the new you that you want to make. Okay, let's read today's scripture. Let's all stand up for the God's Word. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. It's pretty long, so we'll read it slowly. The words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. 
utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What do people gain for all their labors in which they toil under the sun? Generations come, generations go, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets and hurries back to where it rises. The wind blows to the south, turns to the north, round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. All streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full. To the place the streams come from, there they return again. All things are wearisome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear is full of hearing. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one can say, Look, this is something new. It was here already long ago. It was here before our time. No one remembers the former generations and even those yet to come will not be remembered by those who follow them. Amen. What King Solomon is here appealing to all of us is this meaningless, meaningless, everything is meaningless under the sun. That's a really depressing message for high school kids, junior high kids I know. <coughs> but your junior high and your high school kid, your ears, you'll never go to, you will never get these ears back again. I don't know what the adults, the teachers memory of their junior <coughs> high and high school memory is, but, but one thing I know, they can never have those years again. I know that Chiu and CJ, when they leave, that's it, no more high school years. I'm sure they're very happy that there's no more high school years, but that they're becoming a college student. But this is a time when you can never get this back. What Solomon is saying is to say, if you don't have God, Whatever you do in this life actually is meaningless. Whatever you did now, are you studying, becoming popular, becoming a famous athlete, maybe a good cheerleader, maybe the best cheerleader ever. Somebody has done it, somebody's doing it, somebody will do it again. Nothing really matters. Time is going to go by. Eyes never have enough of seeing. You're never going to be satisfied. Because your soul will never be satisfied without God. You're always going to be seeking and seeking and seeking. <coughs> your ears have, will never be satisfied. You will always desire more and more and more. <coughs> so, what King Solomon is telling us is, hey, Without God, everything is meaningless. That is the main message that I want to get across to you when you, as you look into 2020. How many of you watched the movie called Forrest Gump? One, two, three, four, five? Okay. Daniel, have you watched the movie called Forrest Gump? Oh, yeah. Okay, six. Forrest Gump is played by Tom Hanks. Okay? Well, you watch that? Seven. <laughs> okay. Let's just say Forrest Gump is not the brightest kid in the class. He's very slow, very nice. And, uh, and he has a leg braces. And he can't, he can't walk. <coughs> so these bullies bully him all the time. At the beginning of the movie was so kind of depressing. So one time he's running away from the bullies and the leg brace comes off and he's just, just chugging along. I mean, 
He's just super fast. Those guys just couldn't be, I mean, he was like the, the wind. And he discovered what? That actually I'm really a fast guy. So in this movie, Forrest Gump gets a football scholarship to college. Whenever he gets the ball, just run. That's the only thing he does. Forget the strategies, forget everything. I give you the ball, you just run. And that's all he does. He's so good at, at, at football, but after graduating, <coughs> he goes to the army and he gets sent to Vietnam for the Vietnam War. Now, in his army, in his platoon, he meets a guy named Bubba. You guys remember him? Bubba? He's not the brightest kid in the class either. And, and they develop this friendship. And, and, and Bubba convinces Forrest to go into a shrimping business together. He, and he talks to him, I think in, in this bus, he's saying, he say, you know, you could deep fry the shrimp, you could marinate the shrimp. And he talks about, I think, like a hundred different ways you could eat shrimp. He just goes on and on and on about shrimp. So, they said, okay, after we come out of this war, let's go and catch some shrimp and we'll go into shrimp business. But later on a, on a patrol, Forrest's platoon is attacked. And Forrest rescues a lot of people. He puts them on his shoulder and what is he good at? Running. So he just runs, puts one down, goes back, gets another one. But Bubba is killed in action. And then the last person that he grabs and runs, he gets shot on the butt. So he's not, uh, not going to die. But then he, get, he, gets, he got discharged. Now, <coughs> and he gets a con congra Congressional Medal of Honor. Because he was shot on the butt, he can't really do anything, so he picked up this sports call. What? Anybody remember? What sport did he pick up? He got shot on the buttocks. He picked up the sports of ping pong. And he's playing ping pong, and he's, and he's just, he just drinking water. I mean, this guy is like a phenomenal ping pong player, and he goes, and he, and he plays against the Chinese team, and he wins, and uh, he gets endorsed by this ping pong paddle company, $25,000. With that money, he goes into shrimping boat business with this person called Lieutenant Dan. Okay, because Bubba is that dead now. They're having a hard time with this shrimping, but after Hurricane Car uh, Carmen, it's, this is the only shrimping boat that didn't get destroyed. So he, they're just getting a lot of shrimp and he started making a lot of money. And they start what we now know as the Bubba Gump franchise. Have you, anybody eat at the Bubba Gump restaurant? In, yeah. They have a lot of things that they do with the shrimp, right? I went there and I, man, I'm getting sick of shrimp. <coughs> just looking at this thing. And on top of that, Lieutenant Dan invests some money into Apple com computer company, and now he's just filthy rich. Forrest Gump is really, really rich. So his mom was dying. So Forrest Gump goes to visit his mom, and mom passes away. And one day, on a whim, Forrest decides to go for a little run. So that day, for no particular reason, I decided to go to go for a little run. So I ran to the end of the road. And when I got there, I thought, hmm, maybe I run to the end of the town. And when I got there, I thought, hmm, maybe I run, I, I would run across the Greenbow County. And I figured since that's what I did, I ran clear across Alabama. For no particular reason, I just kept on running. I ran to the ocean. And when I got there, I figured since I came this far, I might just as well turn around 
and keep running the other way to the other ocean. So he's just running to the Pacific Ocean, to the Atlantic Ocean, and he becomes a very famous person. People start following him. They start running behind him. And everybody, like doing like a TV shows and stuff, they're wondering, why is Forrest running? And there's all these people with like speculations. He's running because it's kind of, he's trying to find himself. And somebody's saying, he's running because he sat because of his mom passed. And somebody is saying this and that. And everybody's guessing why Forrest is running. And one day, he stops. After three years, two months, 14 days, and 16 hours, Forrest stops and turns around. That's a long time to be running, three years. He stops and he turns around and everybody that's behind him, hundreds of people say, hey, hey, quiet, quiet, he's going to say something. And Forrest Gump says this, I'm pretty tired, I think I'm going to go home. And he just goes home. When I watch this movie, but if you think about it, that is our life. Of course, we're all not going to be superstars, fast as running back in college. We're not going to be having a like a be a war hero, saving people from from death and getting a congressional medal of honor. We're not going to be a ping pong Olympic superstar. We're not going to be investments at Apple. We're not going to be a billionaire, maybe. But after all that, Forrest simply wants to go home. All of us. I don't want... I can understand this from Forrest because he's not the smarter, smartest, brightest kid in the class. It's very simple. He just does one thing. I know all of you sitting here is a lot smarter than Forrest. I don't want you to go through life like Forrest. And at the end say what? I'm going to go home. At the end of everything, where is your home? Where are you going to go, Calvin? Where is your final home at the end? heaven. It's our eternal home. When it's all over, we're going to say, what? You know, I'm tired. I'm going to go home. God's going to be there. <clears throat> As we close, I want all of you to think about what you are running after in your life. What are you trying to accomplish? Why do you want to accomplish the things you want to accomplish? What is the thing that makes you, you? What brings meaning, happiness, satisfaction to your life? What must happen in 2020 to make you guys satisfied, to fulfill you? I want you to realize the truth that God has revealed to us today that everything in this life ultimately is meaningless without God. It's all chasing under the sun. We need God to have meaning. We need God to have a permanent home at the end of our journey when we're tired of this life. I want you to visualize yourself about the same time next year. Where do you want to be? How do you want to change? When Daniel is one year older and getting closer to college, he looks at himself and says, you know, I see my change up, like, to a, this kind of a person next year. As we approach the end of 2019, I encourage and I challenge all of you to do the following. First thing is this. There's three things. First thing, you have to think. 
there's too many people who live who's living who's living without thinking we're just letting day after day just whatever it comes that day I'm just going to do my best that day I want you to think how do I really want to live what kind of person do I want to be what kind of husband what kind of wife what kind of teacher what kind of student what kind of son what kind of daughter what kind of sibling what kind of friend do I want to be what kind of Christian do I want to be you have to think number two remind yourself of the greatest command I don't care what particular goal you have the things that you have to remember above everything else is the command that Jesus Christ gave which is love God and love your neighbor I don't care if your goal is to lose 10 pounds get straight A's <coughs> get straight A's get a promotion at work whatever it may be what's important the most important in your life is the greatest commandment that Jesus Christ gave love God and because you love God, you love your parents in a godly way. You love your siblings in a godly way. You love your friends, not by doing whatever they want to do, but you love them in a godly way. You have to love yourself in a godly way. <clears throat> Number three, make a resolution that is worthy of your Christian calling. I want you to take today, in the, instead of doing a family QT, we're going to do a New Year's resolution writing. Okay? I want you to think about the three resolutions you want to write for your 2020. I want you to write what's in your heart first. Right now, just what's in your mind. And then I want you to look at those that you've written and think. Is this the right things that I should be wanting? Is this the right thing that I should be desiring? Or is this just all from myself and actually I should desire something else? So there's three things that you write off top of your head and then I want you to write the three things right next. After thinking and praying about and discussing this with your group of what you really should be what you really ought to be wishing for in your life. Okay, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we look forward to your 2020, Lord. We thank you for this year. And of course, next year we want it to be better than this year. Better in a sense that we will be more mature Christian in you, Lord. That we would love you more. We would love everybody else more. That we will be a loving person. And we will be more satisfied, more fulfilled as a person. That we know who we are. We discover more of who I am and what I am on this earth for, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just lead us. Help us to make a determination, make a commitment in the year of 2020 and help us fulfill it, Lord. We pray all these things in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.